How we doing there boys and girls, Mantis here and welcome back to another video. So it's time today to take a little bit of a look at tailoring. Tailoring is one of the two new professions that we've had access to on the alpha this week. Uh, we, we decided to take a little bit of a look at tailoring first. We'll take a look at in engineering uh, probably tomorrow. So if you want to come and check that out, if you're watching this video as it goes live, come say hi on the stream tomorrow. We'll take a little bit of a look at that in further detail. But for now, let's look at tailoring. We spent a bit of time playing with tailoring today. Tailoring feels quite cool. We like tailoring. Tailoring is also always a solid profession for most. Uh, it pairs up quite nicely with other professions and it seems to be doing a, you know, they, 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 the foundation of tailoring is staying the same. Um, a few, I mean, one thing to note is that they are adding this unraveling. This is a, this is a new thing for tailoring. I suppose we should start at the beginning. On your travels as a tailor, you are likely to come along and find tattered wilder cloth and eventually just regular wilder cloth itself. There is going to be a few more different variations of cloth in Dragonflight. Decayed wilder cloth, singed wilder cloth and frostbitten wilder cloth. Um, so a little bit, a little bit more materials to collect. No surprises to anybody there. Uh, now the original stuff doesn't seem to at this moment in time have a quality on it. The tattered, whether it be tattered, whether it be wilder cloth, whether it be decayed, whatever. This doesn't seem to actually have quality attached to it right now, like we've seen with some other stuff. But once you process it, then hey presto, in comes the quality. So this unraveling basically allows you to take regular stuff and convert it into the spools of wilder thread. Your thread now is something that you seem to be able to produce yourself rather than needing to buy it off a vendor. No longer do we need to be spending 9 gold or what was it, 7 gold 20 exalted on your penumbra threads. Uh, it looks like we're going to be re reliant on ourselves for getting our threads. We're going to craft it from some basic materials we get from out and about travelling. Or, of course, in most cases, for most people, buying it off the auction house. Um, we do make some bolts, then. You can take the wilder cloth that you make along with some spools, in some case, uh, to actually convert into bolts. This is something that's pretty much a stable uh, use for tailors. Some interesting things to note is that you can see a little tagline here. Use is available, 7 of 7. There are two bolts, chrono cloth and as a weave that are key components in making some specific pieces of end game gear that do appear to have a cooldown to them. There is a uses available, seven of seven. Um, Chrono Cloth is subject to the same. Both of these have got a bit of a cooldown on them. Uh, likely to make it so that you can only make one of these a day, but this looks to be some sort of charge system so that if you don't log on every single day, your charges can accumulate and then you can come along Maybe as little as or as infrequently as just once a week and make seven in one go, which would be quite nice there, I suppose. Um, a nice little bit of flexibility if they are going to put the materials on a cooldown. You don't have to log in every single day. Um, so you get cloth, you turn some of the cloth into your thread, you take some of the rest of the cloth and turn it into bolts. Um, all sounds pretty much like what tailors would expect at this point. There are some optional reagents we get to make as a tailor. These are going to uh, increase the difficulty of the items that you attach them to, but are going to have some cool things. When above 90% health, gain mastery, and your spells have the chance to deal some bonus damage or healing. It's uh, That seems very generic, and it seems almost mandatory. If your gear can do more damage, why would you not use it? Uh, but we'll see how these play out. These, you can see, though, are using the Chrono Cloth and the Azawee bolts. So these are going to be more so limited to how many of these you can actually bang out. You can maybe only craft one of these a day due to this limitation on crafting the materials. The actual Azawee bolts and the Chronocloth bolts though don't seem to have any restriction on them. It does mean that you might have tailors out there that craft these and then choose to list these on the auction house. So if you wanted to make more of the items that need them, there's the option that you can just go buy some more materials, but expect those materials to be at a premium because of the limitation to how much of them that can actually be made. Um, there's not too much more you know, finishing reagents and things. There are some threads coming back here. 
Um, this seems to be a staple of Dragonflight, you know, being able to attach little bonuses when crafting things to hopefully uh, maybe improve the quality or offer a perk on them. This might give you an extra skill point when crafting it, for example. Um, there are a few little fun little threads that you can use, all little flavorful stuff to make the crafting feel a little bit more enjoyable. But let's get on to the stuff that most people care about. What are we making gear-wise? Well, gear-wise, you start off with some basic stuff. Your basic leveling uh, requires, item, requires level 61. You're going to start equipping this stuff relatively quickly. Um, ignore for the moment the amount of reagents that it uses. Pretty much everything is using the exact same amount of reagents. So I imagine this to, to change dramatically between now and the game going live. But you have three or four pieces here of basic leveling gear. There's going to be a PvP set. Once again, requires item level 61. Um, very, very basic set of PvP gear here. Uh, not yet implemented, unfortunately, at the moment for testing. And then you've got your end game gear. The Vibrant Wilder Cloth is the end game set. You see it has the Radiant Tag. Uh, as far as we believe so far, a single character is going to be able to equip up to five pieces of Radiant gear. This gives people the inability to equip, uh, to equip an entire set of endgame gear through crafting. But it does mean that being able to equip up to five means you can quickly, when you start raiding or doing the endgame content, fill in any gaps where you're unlucky, where the boss doesn't drop what you want. You can turn to your crafters to be able to fill those gaps with some reasonable gear, which will be uh, upgradable in both item level and recipe difficulty going forward. If you increase the item level, you're going to increase the difficulty, making it harder to craft at higher and higher qualities. Um, one piece for every you know slot you'd imagine. Uh, pretty simple, basic stuff. You're going to set your secondary stats on this. This is work order bait, by the way. You may have noticed that every single craft here is a bind on pickup item. Uh, sure, if you're a tailor and can equip it and wear it yourself, you go ahead, you do you. But for the most part, this is going to be work order bait. You're going to be filling work orders for other people that want these. You'll find a work order that comes in. Hopefully, through the work order, they'll provide some of the rarer, the bind on pickup materials. They'll provide you a tip and it'll be up to you how much you deem worthy <laughs> to, to, to craft that item for them or not. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. The garments is pretty much simple. Then we've got this as a weave garments and chronocloth garments. These are quite interesting in terms of that they're the similar sort of item level as the other end game set we looked at a minute ago. But there are some slight perks and slight bonuses here if you equip a couple of these items. There's three pieces within the set. The two piece set is all that's required to unlock the set bonus. Uh, but both chronocloth crafting. And as a weave crafting has this little mini set, both of which do slightly different things. You may start to see some work orders coming in specifically for these bits of gear rather than the more the more generic set. Um, there's a little bit more customization with the generic set, but some people might specifically be after the bonuses that you can obtain from the two set piece here. But as we know, uh, as a weave, Bolts and chronocloth bolts are going to be limited in quantity by a daily cooldown on making them. So be aware of that going into it. Uh, tailoring is making a bunch of profession gear. Uh, you can see the slots up here. I've not filled any of the slots at the moment, but we, we are expecting to make a whole bunch of gear. The basic entry level stuff, what I've often been referring to as sort of tier one profession gear, is bind on equip which is nice to see you'll be able to craft some of these keep them listed on the auction house keep a steady flow of gold coming in hopefully selling these off to other people uh there's a herbalism one a fishing one a cooking one looks like tailors are going to do a good job of supplying sort of gathering in secondary professions and then one for enchanting and one for alchemy you then have the tier two quality uh profession equipment this is all bind on pickup. Again, this is going to forcibly push it through the work order system. Uh, anybody that's been paying attention to my content recently will probably be aware that I'm not overly impressed with just how many patterns are bind on pickup. 
it does mean that it puts a lot of emphasis on the work order system being a solid, strong, liked system by the player base. Uh, I do have my concerns in that regard, but either way, uh, you should start to see some work orders come through for these uh, once you unlock them. Spell threads are coming back for tailors. This is going to be a fun one for tailors, having the ability to make spell threads again. Uh, these are seemingly remarkably powerful. Uh, 404 intellect and 404 stamina. That's a sizable chunk of main stat. That's as much main stat as you would expect from a single piece of gear in the first place. So uh, having one of these attached to, where is it, your legs, is going to be a big little boost for people and expect these to be in high demand. But don't forget, as a weave bolts, these are on the daily cooldown. Um, so once again, you may not... Why did that just... I'm not sure why that just changed to a lock symbol as recording, but, you know, alpha does alpha things. Uh, expect these to be quite expensive and suspect them to be relatively rare uh, initially due to the limitations of using daily cooldown materials. There is a basic spell thread, one that people are probably going to equip primarily until they're willing to lay out the cost for a frozen one. There is a basic one that gives plus 81 main stat by the looks of things at the moment. But expect these numbers to change. It's nice to see that spell threads are a thing though. Some, something else for you to craft. Keep keep stocked on the auction house and hopefully see some steady sales for. Um, bags, always a big part of tailoring. Bags are making a comeback. Uh, we are responsible for making both the reagent bags. You can see there's a 36 slot reagent bag. And regular 32 and 34 slot bags as well uh luckily luckily at the moment at least all bind on pickup so four more bags for you to acquire the patterns for start crafting keep listing on the auction house bags are always a always a good win um same story is true though it uses as a weave bolts and it uses chronocloth bolts so you are going to have to pick and choose where you decide to use these components as you're going to only be able to get one of them a day. Um, unless, of course, you have an army of tailors. Uh, I'm sure people will do degenerate things to get more of these or, you know, expect them to be pricey on the auction house. Um, and then a bunch of fun stuff. This is the fun stuff that I wish professions had more of. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of little toys, a duck stuffed, duck lovey toy. Um, take a nap next to your favourite ducky. This is all weird and wonderful little stuff, but it's uh, it's little things that just adds a bit of flavour to the professions. Cool one, a couple of cool ones, is the, the return of banners for tailors. Um, Dragon Isles Flora, giving a bonus to herbalists in the area, giving them an increase to their, uh, their specific secondary stats for gathering. Um, now, this is a one-hour cooldown on this, and it lasts 10 minutes. Uh, but there is a quality thing on these as well. When you up the quality of them, it does seem to drop the cooldown of using this banner as well. So maybe when we get the ability to make a tier 3 quality one of these, it's a really short cooldown. Uh, and might be quite a powerful thing for uh, miners or herbalists to carry around with them and to use to, in to improve their ability to gather effectively um, and then a few other little little toys some cushions a market tent and so on and so on and then of course your, your default bandages um, so tailoring in terms of what we're crafting is mostly what we'd expect it to be a couple of cool little additions with the embroidery nice to see that spell threads are making a return uh, and of course profession equipment is going to be uh, going to be, be be hot sellers, I would imagine, in the early days of Dragonflight with everybody levelling up their professions, trying to gain as many bonuses and boosts as they can possibly get their hands on. So let's take a look at the spec trees then. The spec trees are... There's four spec trees. You get Tailoring Mastery uh, as soon as you get... Uh, you get basically this one unlocked for free. This is your sort of generic tailoring one. You're going to get some basic skill points for crafting tailoring items. And you can choose to spec into being better at collecting cloth, being better from a resourcefulness point of view when crafting things like your, your threads. Um, 
you're going to very quickly want to put 30 points in here because it just gives you flat plus skill points for anything you're crafting with the profession. But you don't, you unlock this instantly and automatically when you hit 25 skill points. When you hit 50 skill points, you'll be able to unlock the third. Uh, and then you're going to need to get all the way to skill 100 before you can unlock the last one. So it feels uh, to me when it comes to the specs that it's almost not a choice of which one do you want. It's more of a case of which one can you do without for the longest. Because you get the first three of them quite quickly. You can probably within a day or two of the expansion going live unlock three of your spec trees. Unlocking them initially is not going to be a, too much of an issue. You're going to have to decide which one of them can you do without until you've maxed your profession. Um, that's really the choice, similar to what we've seen with other professions. Um, textiles, for reference, textiles is uh, more of an optimization tree. This is probably one that you may not pick up straight away. This is going to allow you just to uh, use less materials when crafting things. Uh, embroidery, for example, gives you a bonus when making sort of uh, finishing reagents. Uh, the banners, the bags, the little odds and ends that you're going to craft and sell on a repeated basis. Um, a bonus when crafting the bolts, giving you the option for multi-craft to hopefully proc more bolts. This is an optimization thing uh, for the most part. The gear crafting comes in with garment crafting. Uh, this is where very similar to how legendaries work today. You spec in one direction and slowly but surely you unlock the pattern for different crafts. These, All of these ones on the outer edge here unlock the vibrant patterns here. So you can see I've unlocked some of the vibrant patterns. Um, you get these as a pattern. You unlock the pattern once you spec into these end nodes. Only takes you 10 points in here before you can unlock this one. Only takes you 10 points in here before you can start unlocking the actual patterns. So minimum of 20 knowledge points in here will get you up and running. My suggestion is make a beeline towards the cloak because, of course, the cloak can be equipped by anybody. Any single player, any single class in the game can wear the tailoring cloak, um, meaning that there's a good chance that there'll be a fair few work orders for this to help you level up the rest of your profession nice and quickly. But I'm not going to go too deep into the sort of the optimizations of the trees for this video. This is merely just a bit of an overview. But this is where you're going to unlock those patterns for the end game gear. And then there's the draconic tree. This is where you get to specialize more so into as a weave or chronocloth. Now we already know that the crafting of the bolts is on a cooldown. Uh, but the more you spec into this, the more effective you are at crafting it. And you can see here, this is not net, not yet implemented on the alpha, but if you spec really deep into one direction or the other, you can see improve your connection with the magic of the blue dragonflight, decreasing how quickly you exhaust the magic used when crafting bolts. Presumably meaning that their intention is that the more you spec into this, the either the greater quantity of the bolts that you can craft uh, before you sort of hit the cooldown limit. Maybe this limit can go from 7 up to 14, up to 21, and maybe it replenishes two or three times faster the more you spec into it. We'll have to see when they implement that just how it works. Uh, but this is going to be if you really need to get your, get your hands on more of these limited cooldown based materials, this is the tree for you. So that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is pretty much tailoring. Uh, tailoring is looking reasonable. It's not too far from what we would expect it to be at this point. A nice few additions with the, uh, with the where have they gone? Where have they gone? The spell threads. It's nice to see the spell threads making a return. And it's very good to see that we are, as tailors, going to be the ones responsible for the main supply of this new reagent bag, the extra... The extra 36 slots to put all our reagents in is going to be very needed come Dragonflight with everything having multiple qualities. Bag space is going to be at a premium. Uh, and once again, tailors are going to be the ones to supply it to everybody. So it's looking good. I look forward to be uh, playing around with tailoring a little bit more so in the future. Um, but yeah, there we go. Make sure you give this video a like if you enjoyed it, boys and girls. If you're new around here, consider hitting that subscription button. Uh, on YouTube, it doesn't cost you anything. Gives you notifications as and when new videos go live. So well worth you doing. Um, but I'll leave it there for today. 
Until next time, boys and girls, have a good one. Peace.